Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about in this video, which I wanted to stream, was from a concept or an idea through to a finished product. Now, what I wanted to do was make a stand for my harp. So when I'm playing my harp, or all the other harps I build too, um, I don't have to have it sitting on the seat and I don't have to have it on my lap. There's a few alternatives around that I've seen on the internet and they just didn't fit the bill for me. So anyway, this is what I started with. To give you a concept, I thought years ago, many, many years ago, I was making um, artist seasals. So I thought, well, I'll use the same concept and I came up with this as a prototype. So the harp sits, oh, let's see if we can get up there, okay. The harp sits there like that and leans back and then I can adjust it to whatever height is comfortable for me. So I've got an adjustment here with the nut, which I haven't got a spanner. Oh, hang on. Well, if this one works, we're in front. If it doesn't, we're not. No, doesn't matter. So this can slide up here. And then what I did was took some chunks out down here. Not very neat, but it's only in developmental stage. And then I could adjust the angle that I wanted to have the harp sitting at by doing that. And then put a spreader here so it was level. Anyway, I looked at that and I thought, yeah, well, that'll work. It's a bit cumbersome and a bit involved, but it sort of folds up, sort of. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to go to someone's place or I'm in a little harp group. We go there and we meet in a park or something. I've got to carry this, I've got to carry that and it just gets too much. So then I went and had a look online and they had aluminium ones and they were like a little tripod. Same setup with this, but then with a metal tripod. I know I'm dabbling in metal now and I'm, I'm enjoying that process but I also wanted to keep it with timber. And then I've seen a couple of other harps that um, what they've done is on the, actually I've got one here, on the bottom of the harp, we use this one because it's lighter to move around, on the bottom of the harp they've got legs and then they screw the legs into there like that. So you've got two legs screwed into the base. Now what I noticed with that was these legs were only held in by these little screws. And as you're playing the harp, it can wobble and it loosens that fitting that the screws go into. And after a while, you've got two legs and they can twist and twirl on each other. So I thought, well, I don't like that idea and then what I did was made a brace up, which I haven't got here because I've just given it to someone, to go between the two legs to tighten it up. But I still think you're going to get this movement unless you screw in um, screws in the side to hold the brace in place. So further from that, I thought, well, what if I've just got a monopod? But that doesn't work because if you've got a monopod, which is a single, they, they have them for cameras. It's just a single leg like that and you play there. But then when you finish playing, if you lean your instrument up against the wall, it's going to fall over because it's got no width on the base. That concept sort of works, but I needed support down here. So... What I came up with was just a bit of wood, turned up on the lathe, and there's your T-piece. And then you can put a screw thread like that 
in the end of here and screw it into the harp. This isn't screwed in, it's just a, a good fit. But then it occurred to me, I've got three chairs that I like to play the harp on. One's a dining room chair, one's a little stool that I made years ago, and one's another stool that I, a little, um, like a milking stool. And so they're different heights. So I need it to be adjustable. So I thought, well, what I could do was drill a whole heap of holes in here and then drill a piece of metal out, a piece of timber out, and have one hole here and then just move it up and down and find the right hole. And sometimes it's only a difference between uh, an inch or three quarters of an inch either, which is comfortable or not comfortable. So then I thought, well, how can I um, stop it? Now, I remember the music stand that I did. And for those of you that saw it, what I did with the music stand was I bought a bolt and then put it into some timber and then turned it and then cut a thread in the music stand itself and screwed the bolt in there. Now, that idea would work, but what I didn't like was with the metal uh, thread, it's going to be bruising this timber all the time with a metal thread. So after a while, I might have to turn a new one of those. So I didn't like that idea. And I was going through my wrap tin the other day to see what I had. And lo and behold, I don't think I have it with me. Oh, I've got one in my pocket. No, but if you're familiar, I, I guess it's around the world, uh, with the bolts that hold the toilet seat onto the pan, they're a nylon, it's not nylon, it um, starts with D, but it's a millable uh, plastic, very, very strong. And there was a couple of these toilet bolt um, things in my, my rat box. So I thought, oh, that'll do. Checked it out, it was metric, it was 10 mil, 1.5 pitch, which was a nice chunky pitch, so I know that if I cut a tap <coughs> in most timbers using a metal tap, that will actually hold the screw. So that's what I came up with. And I turned this little knob here and put part of the bolt in and then turned another cylinder, drilled it out, drilled the hole in the side, tapped it, so now, all I have to do is can screw that in there. Being nylon, I can put a fair amount of pressure on it. That doesn't come off or spin around, but it also doesn't mar the wood on the inside. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, I fitted it to Oh, another harp that's up in another shed. And it was good, except when I played and I was on tile floors or something, that's what happened. It just, move that, you don't need to see that. It kept slipping. So I thought, well, okay, what I could do, I thought I could put some feet on it. And when I say feet, these feet here that I've got on the bottom of the harp, I thought that would do. Again, had another problem, because if I put it directly in the one spot, it wouldn't slip there, but if I was seated on a smaller seat, and this was leaning back a bit further, the rubber wasn't in connection with the floor and it would slip. So I thought about it and I went up to the local uh, box hardware shop, which is Bunnings in Australia, bought some rolls of rubber, could have used an inner tube, but that looked ugly. I wanted it to look nice. Uh, they had little square patches you could put on the bottom of um, carpets so it doesn't slip. But there was only four patches in this packet you could buy and it had all these other shapes that didn't suit my purpose. So I thought about it and thought about it. Then came up with the idea of O-rings, rubber O-rings. So then putting two rubber O-rings 
over the side like that, all of a sudden, that's it. It won't slip, doesn't matter how hard you put. So I'm thinking, that's good. I'm there, but it looks ugly because they, they can roll off and this, that and the other. So anyway, I thought about this for a bit. Um, oh, that was the other thing. If I'd put this straight in there, uh, oh, I don't know what the correct name for them is. I call them um, screws in bolts or screw in bolts. I'll just get one and I'll show you. These things here. And what they do is, these are 10 mil internals. I drill a 15 mil hole in the timber. This part here screws into the timber. And then that screws in there like that. Now, that works very fine, but you come back to the same problem you had when you're using this setup. That if you've only got that one screw thread holding in position, these are quite, this one's quite a heavy hub. As it moves around, you can elongate this in the timber and you can wear the thread on the inside. So where is the forces coming from here? There's a force down that way because the harp's up here. I'm pushing down so you've got a force coming that way. And you've also got a force going either which way. So what I came up with was made this gusset plate that now fits over the top like that. This screws into the harp. This is free, but it takes the slack up so I can really tighten that hard. And then that gives me support on both sides and front and back mo movement. And depending, you can't do this in exactly the same spot every time. That's why it's got to be free moving because where that thread starts denotes where the foot's going to end up because you don't start, every time you put a new one in, you don't start the thread in the same spot. It depends where it takes. That was the idea of having this been able to move as well. So that was it. That was my prototype. I think it was not yesterday morning, uh, day before. And then yesterday I thought, well, I want to make one for my harp, but I want to make it a little bit better because this to me is ugly and yeah, whatever else. So this is what I've come up with and this is the final one. There could be more along the way, who knows? But this is Jarrah and the harp itself is Jarrah. So if you have a look, same colour timber. So I've bored it out to a nice tolerance. And then I turned the foot, but with this one, as I said, I didn't like those because they were ugly and they didn't line up. And that's the same all the way along, even though this does make it a little bit higher. If I was on a, a slate floor or something, I could be hitting the floor with these bits. So what I did was I put a slight waist in here, so it's off the floor and it's higher up than these pieces and I put four little recesses in there so these will fit nicely in the recesses and won't roll off and the reason for the four is because if you got two and you break one well, it's going to be lopsided. Whereas if you've got <clears throat> four, and even if you break two, you're going to be okay until you can get home and replace it. So this is the first time I've actually put this together. And the knob I just turned about half an hour ago. So we'll see how it all goes together. That's a plate that I've made. And that fits over there like that. There's the, there's the mounting screw. 
there. So, we will. So now, this goes to the front. I can screw this in. Hold that there. Continue to screw that. And then we get this. That goes up there. We tighten that. And hopefully, turn that. There you go. I can then lean that back and play if I want to have it a bit higher. All I've got to do is pull that T-section out, tighten it up, and there you go. If I'm using a smaller stool, I can drop it down, tilt it back, all the same type of timber, doesn't slip, doesn't go anywhere. Now that, and the reason for the video, is this would not have happened if I hadn't have made this. So sometimes when you're making something, you are, oh, and look, I think we all suffer from it. Oh, I've got to get it right the first time. It has to be perfect the first time. No, you've got to have disasters. You've got to have failures. You've got to have, what did I waste my money on that for? Um, okay, this was built out of cheap-ish timber. Not, it's, it's not pine. It looks like pine, but it's not. It's actually... Um, Japanese cedar but it's not a drama because I can now pull this apart and I can use this with the bead boxes that I make so I'm not losing anything but this was the concept and until this became a reality this didn't have a hope of getting off the ground so I just encourage you I don't care whether you're doing art whether you're doing metalwork whether you're doing sewing knitting songwriting whatever just get in there and don't be afraid to start because you've got to start somewhere so then you can finish and how you what i think is a saying it doesn't matter how you start it's how you finish and if it wasn't for this and i really thought i'd hit a home run with this one now this one's developed and i look it won't stop there I'll start doing embellishments. I can do uh, barley twists on it. I can do it out of some other sort of timber and inlaid if I wanted, but there you go. So no matter what you're thinking of doing, you can sit there and think as long as you like. It's not until you get up and actually do something that things start to happen. So that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, um, the evolution of an idea and uh, have a go at something yourself. So that's it. It's time for me to pull the shed door down and remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop again very, very soon. I'm going to put my wireless G6s on and go about and do some work. So catch you all later. Thanks for watching. If you like the channel, please hit the subscribe. See you soon. God bless. Bye for now.